Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I'm your guide Maribel and today I have your five day split. Each day we're gonna be focusing on a different muscle group. So if you're a pro, if you're a beginner, you will definitely find something in this video so let's have fun together let's build strength so grab your gear grab your water and let's get right into it shout out to meg Willek. i got this idea from one of her channels she's another fitness trainer shout out to her for giving me this great idea i love all of her content but without no hesitation let's get right into it okay so today is your day one and of course you know your girl love her lower body so we're gonna hit our lower body and i'm gonna be showing you one round of the move, however, you are gonna do four sets, but don't worry about that. I'm definitely gonna do a voiceover and guide you through the moves. So let's get right into our workout. I have my timer ready. We're gonna do 30 seconds of work and 15 seconds of rest. Start with warm up and we're gonna start with lunges. So when you're doing your lunges, you do wanna make sure that you are holding your core tight. When I mean tight, I mean like a zipper. Also remember you are doing three rounds to four rounds of 30 seconds work with a 15 seconds rest. Our next move is gonna be a goblet squat. When you're doing a goblet squat, don't rush through the faces. Just take it slow as well as control. Focus on pushing your hips back and also maintaining balance. This help activate your glutes, hamstring and quads. You might not notice this, but I am actually engaging my glutes at the bottom of my squat. So what I'm doing is I'm really squeezing these glutes and I'm driving myself right back up. The last movement for your warm up is going to be jumping jacks. I wanted to add some jumping jacks just to switch it up and just show a little bit of a different type of movement. And if you know, you know I'm going to start with my squats. I don't play around. So we're going to do squats. As you could tell, I haven't been lifting as heavy just because i had a knee injury a few months ago and i just want to be able to gradually get back to to lifting as heavy as i know i could now one thing that i do want to mention is your bar should not be in your neck it should be in your back and always take your time with each move during this workout once you're done with your three to four sets of squats we are going to move to side to side lunges the reason why i added this right after your squat is because i want you to focus on your flexibility as well so side to side um, lunges help you with hip flexibility as well as reduce risk of hip joint problems one of my favorite moves to do when i want to get back and just focus on those glutes so this is called the curtsy lunge. There's so many different names out there, but it's basically the same move. You do want to do three to four sets, as, I'm, as I mentioned before, 30 seconds work, 50 seconds rest. Now, if you do want to make it a little bit more harder, make sure to add dumbbells or maybe do a pause curtsy lunge, which is when you just pause and then you do the other leg. Our next move is a bridge with one leg up. This move is amazing for your glutes as well as your hamstrings now what i do want to say is when you're doing this move make sure that you hold your core because this also helps you with balance whether you're looking to tone your glutes or tone your core this move is it and of course what you do on one side you have to do on the other so I'm, I'm gonna go ahead and let you just see the movement and then we'll move to our next movement that's right we are working on our core believe it or not when you work on your core that gives you the illusion of the slim thick physique so this is why we are going to focus on the bicycle crunches i always add a little bit of core either at the end either at the beginning or just throughout my whole movement i make sure to always hold my core and the reason why you always hear me saying this is because i want you to be focusing on your um, obliques as well as your transverse abdominis those are the ones that you have to 
for me, for me personally, it's the ones that I always like to target just because it helped me with posture as well as my um, stability. Our next app move is a standing high kick. Your force should be coming from your glutes and your quads as well as your hamstring, which is why I'm holding the weight and not moving my arms because when you move your arms, you are using momentum. Next, we're moving right into weight and march. I know I say this, but this is one of my favorite moves. I always say that, but it's hard to pick. There's so many good movements for your body. I do want you to focus on doing three to four sets, 30 seconds work, 15 seconds rest. That was your strength toning session, and right now we're gonna get into your cardio session. Your cardio session is actually only two movements that you're gonna repeat for three sets. Starting off with squats jump. Now, when you do a cardio session, I personally like using explosive movement because it burns the most fat. And also, it's so, it, it does so much for your um, cardiovascular. So, explosive movement, plyometric is your go-to. Especially if you are an athlete, you should be doing explosive movements. I am out of breath. The way that I set up the movement and combine them is for at this point of time, you won't be able to breathe. The way that I set up this program for you guys is basically, this is how you know if you're doing, if you put in the work. If at this point, you're not able to say a sentence without stopping, next time you do this workout, you have to go harder. This is how you know what stage you are in. So I'm gonna make sure that I set it up like this for a purpose. So now that I'm able to speak a little bit more normal, I'm gonna go ahead and do my second workout. Let's get right into it. We're gonna do some. Hmm. I have two that I'm thinking about. Let's see. Option number one will be jogging in place or star jumps, depending what's your goal. If you really want to burn fat, I will go with star jump. I am out of breath, but that's exactly what I'm looking for when I'm training my clients. So what I do is, once I speak to them and I understand their goals, this is a great, a great example of how you should be talking. If you're able to give me a sentence about how you're feeling, you gotta work harder. So if this is the scale that I did personally. I'll go ahead and oh, right here. So I will ask my clients, how are you feeling? Oh, how are you feeling? A rating from six to 20. All the blue, no. Green, okay, next time maybe we go a little bit harder. Red, you can't anymore. And that's what I want to see when I'm training. When I'm training. But I'll go ahead and put this on the screen. Let's finish. After you're done with your cardio session, your finisher is basically one simple move and is tippy toe marches. Make sure to hold your core in, as I always mention. And as you can see here, it's a little bit difficult for me because you're working your entire body as well as trying to stabilize yourself. So I hope you enjoy this workout. Let's go ahead to day number two. This is day Two. Okay, today we're going to be working on our upper body. Some people like to split their upper body, but for this split, we're going to keep it just upper body. Make sure that you have different weights because I am going to be progressing. So I'm going to have five, eight, my goal even to 35 or 20, depending how my body feels. Now, I'm going to make sure that you grab your water, your mat if you have one, and a sweat towel because you're gonna need it let's get right into it if you're looking for the warm-up of this workout i did it as a short so go head over to my page where you have the short before you start this workout for your split but we're gonna go ahead and start with deadlift with a lateral raise so let's get right into it all right guys so i want you to go ahead and grab your lighter 
dumbbells. What you do is a deadlift into a side raise. So I'm gonna go ahead and show you. As always, make sure that you are holding your abs in and that you hydrated two hours before this workout. One thing I do wanna mention is I don't, when you come up with your um, arm raises, I don't want you to pass your chest. So I'm gonna go ahead and show you guys. I don't want you to rush through the movement, so take your time. You have 90 seconds. There is no amount of reps that you should be doing. Just work your 90 seconds, just stay focused, and as always, hold your core and smoothly get through this workout. Make sure that you're not rounding your back. I know that 90 seconds is a lot, but just think about it like this. You're only doing one set. Move number two is front raise. Same dumbbells, don't change them yet. You can tell we are working on our shoulder as well as if you notice I'm adding some deadlift in there your back and your glutes because we all love glutes but this workout is focused on your upper body. Make sure that you're staying in shoulder level and always exhale as you're coming up. This move is gonna really tone your upper body and give you the shoulder look that you always wanted. This is going to burn. But guess what? You got it in you. Don't stop. We are almost done. You need to put your dumbbells down or take a sip of water. Go ahead. This is your time. But our next move is going to be working on our deltoid as well as our posterior. Now, what I do want to tell you is sometimes I forget to hold my absent, although I say so much time. But I'm going to keep repeating it. Hold your core in focusing on deadlift with a high roll make sure that when you come up you always are kinetic your whole body moves together we roll think about your muscles in your back make sure that they are contracting this is all shoulder workout right here moving right along with deadlift with shoulder presses these exercises are primarily working your deltoid muscles of the shoulders if you want to up your weight this is the perfect exercise to do so so i'm gonna let you go ahead and make that decision for yourself i am holding in my abs i have my thighs contracting i have my back muscles tight and i'm just working through my movement without using momentum sure that you are exhaling as your weights are coming up once you're done with your shoulder press you are going to want to hit the mat we are starting with a white push-up the reason for the wide stand is because i want to focus on your chest area moving forward all of our moves are going to be done in the mat the reason why i made this a mat based workout at the end is because i want to make sure that i'm isolating my upper body and making sure that i'm focusing on those muscles you need to modify the wide push-up please go to your knees and this is called a knee push-up this is usually for people who are just starting their journey my beginners i would say try at least one to two um, push-ups and if that is still too much go ahead and do a wall push-up if you feel like you could do at least a couple do not Hesitate and go ahead and push yourself. After I was done with my push-ups, I went ahead and did a bent over roll. The reason why I started doing a bent over roll right after my push-up is because it's a great superset to do. It focuses on your upper back, it focuses on your deltroid and your trapezoids. This is just an amazing move to help you improve your posture. And right here, I'm gonna give you kind of another view from a different side for you can see how I'm keeping my lower body as still as possible and all of my movement is coming from my upper body. When you're doing your bent over rows, keep your neck in a neutral position. Looking at the ground towards your feet or maybe in front of you. This is so important. I see so many people trying to look at their form and they're messing up the whole form and also it's most likely that you're gonna get injured. After my bent over rows, I went ahead and started my close grip dumbbell. Right now, I'm working on my front shoulders, lower chest, lower tricep, and my upper tricep. Here, I'm showing you how you could actually do this movement without any weights. Right after, I went and did my chest flies and I did it on my knees because I wanted to make sure that I was isolating my chest muscles. 
This is a great workout to do in the gym. If you have a cable machine, I always do this move at, in the gym, but obviously this is a home workout, so this is a great alternative. This is the side view. This is exactly how your body should be looking when you're doing your flies on your knees. So I was just introduced to reverse grip dumbbell curls and when I tell you I'm obsessed, your girl is obsessed. When you grip your dumbbell, just make sure that your palms are facing down and all of your contractions should be felt on your bicep. And you should not be in no type of pain. Just wanna mention that. I'm showing you guys different size of views and I really hope this helps because I learned that um, I need to be able to see almost a 360 of the workout in order to understand it and get it. So I really hope this helps you out. We are almost done with your upper body workout, but before we're done, I went ahead and did my overhead tricep extension. And I want you to have your shoulders closed. And a tip that I always mention is try to have your elbows close to your ears. That would be my number one tip. If your knees start to hurt, you can either double up your mat or just sit on your heels. It really depends how flexible you are. Try your best to keep your core and your shoulders stable. Now, when you, slower, when you slowly lower the weight behind your back, try to return right back up as quickly as possible. So I did my 90 seconds and then I rested and then I went right into my bicep curls. What you wanna do is try to squeeze your bicep and bend the arms, right? Then you wanna curl your weight towards your shoulders. Only bring the weight as high as you can without moving your elbows. One thing is you don't wanna lock your joints. Also try to keep tension on the muscle. Right after I did my skull crusher and honestly this is just a front extension, French press and you're gonna target your tricep. If you don't have dumbbell, that's fine. You could either use a barbell. This is kind of a beginner's move honestly, but I love this move. I was trying to lock my elbows to kind of maintain the tension on my tricep muscles. So that's one of the tips that I would encourage you to do. So at the end of the workout, you have a super set. And of course, it was an app movement. I hope you enjoy this. Let me know how you feel down below. Comment down below. Let me know what was your favorite move. If you was able to complete this whole entire workout. Guys, let's go over to day number three. This is day three of my split and I'm gonna be focusing on cardio. So I know I have mentioned before that I don't do cardio, but then I started, I started thinking, I cycle, I've been cycling for almost four years, meaning that cycling is a form of cardio, but your girls is gonna switch it up. Although I'm still gonna do my cycling, I'm gonna switch it up and show you guys some cardio movement that you could do at home. Your warm-up should always be five minutes long. Once you're done with your warm-up, I went ahead and I grabbed a light resistant band and a heavy resistant band. The reason why I added the resistant band during my cardio is because I wanna work on functional strength. Now, what that means is this is gonna help me improve my muscles, it's gonna help me with my performance in the gym, and it's just gonna help me with my movement. This is just a daily task for people who do sports, this is a perfect addition to your cardio. You do have high knees, and I also added speed drill running high knees. The difference between the high knees and the speed drill is that you are actually focusing on your speed instead of how high your knees could come up. I perform each exercise for 40 seconds and I rested for 15 seconds. Yes, your girl got a mic. I got it yesterday, as you could tell, but I thought it really wasn't gonna work because I'm like, how is it gonna work? But girl, when I started to edit, I said, it works. So your girl has a mic, so that's what's up. So after my tap jump, I wanted to kind of progress that move. So I added in a squat, so then I went into a squat, tap, jump. Heads up, I did some mountain climbers. I know not everybody like mountain climbers. I don't like burpees, but that doesn't stop me from doing them because I know that they're good for me. This is a great time to switch your light band to one heavier. This is really gonna give you those glute 
movement, those glute activation that you need. You are working your core with this climber and you are also working up your upper body. So this is a whole body movement. I wanted to also work a little bit more on my abs. So what I did was I added a hold. I hold for, I would say not that long and then I return to the climb and then I hold on my opposite leg. I personally love doing plant jacks, but if you feel like it's just too much, you could just do a regular jumping jack. It's really up to your comfort zone. Um, I also want to mention to you that I did use my squat rack because I love it so much and it just, it just makes me happy. I just did, I think my bar is 35 if I'm not mistaken, I think it's 35 pounds. So that's exactly what I did. I really pushed myself to work for 45 seconds, but it was so difficult. I was just out of breath at this point. I did my cycling for 20 minutes, if I'm not mistaken. Maybe a little bit more. Honestly, I love cycling. I've been doing it for four years. It's just fantastic. But now we're going to move on to day number four. See you guys tomorrow. So for today, Thursday, I'm going to be honest. I usually take a break on the third day. So I either work out straight for three days and then on the third day I rest and I never go three days without working out. So three days is my max. However, for the video purposes, today is Thursday and we're going to hit full body workout. Guys, this is your day number three and we're going to start off with a full body workout. The only difference from this workout is that it's going to be focusing as if you were in the gym. All of my other workout, you can move around, you can change your movement. However, when you are in the gym, you have to be conscious of other people around you, what machines are actually available. So I'm gonna give you a gym routine, full body, that you could for sure do at the gym. And we're gonna start with sumo deadlift. That's gonna be number one, because you know you need your deadlift. And we're gonna do sumo because you wanna focus on your glute and groin your glute. Any issues growing your glutes, always do your sumo deadlift, sumo squat. Make sure that the movement are sumo to focus, it, to focus on your glute. Start your sumo deadlift. You do wanna start with a lower weight and then just progressively increase. I'm gonna start with 10, but my goal is to go up to 25. Remember, only the bar or only the Barbie bar is 35 pounds. So depending what gym- So I just found out it's not 35 pounds, it's actually 45 pounds. So kudos to me. You are at, depending what bar you get, is the amount of weight. So make sure that you know how much you are actually lifting. A lot of people don't count the bar not knowing you're supposed to count your bar. And I'm gonna do Four sets of 12. So for this full body workout, what I did was I did upper body. However, I did more of a pulling. So this is why I'm using the resistant band instead of a pushing, which we already did on Tuesday. Move into sumo squat. And I'm gonna do four sets of 12. This workout is, is perfect for the gym. And actually for my shy girls, you can actually do this in one station, which is why you will go in the gym, put them in your rack, gain your weight, and you will be moving from the rack until you're going home. So this is definitely for all my shy girls that don't wanna move around the gym. This is a perfect workout. Keep in your inner thighs and hold in your abs. And I want every movement to count. You don't have to rush. If you cannot give me 12, that's fine. Give me at least four heavy ones and with good form. So I'm gonna go ahead and take off my shoes. I want a more of a flat um, ground. So I'm gonna go ahead and take off my shoes and do one more step of my sumo squat. Progressively is the plan. You wanna progress your weight. I'm gonna be able to go back to my regular lifting. So I'm gonna start with this weight and then gradually add on my weight. So I decided to do bridges and then I'm gonna go ahead and do my lunges. The only thing is that I'm gonna add elevation to my lunge and I'm really targeting those glutes. So don't forget to elevate the lunges and do your sumo. That will be the two tips when you really wanna focus on your glutes. I advise you to do progressive overload, which I've been doing, which I've been showing you guys since I started my fitness journey. You wanna progressively up your weight if you're really trying to build muscle, a booty. You have to progressively up your weight guys so i know that some females are scared to lift do not be scared 
And that's your day four. Let's get right ahead to the last day. Day number five. Good morning everyone and welcome to day number five. Today is all about full body corrective exercises. This is for injury, for sports player, or just for imbalances. This is your day five and what I usually do, I usually do this either on the fourth day or the fifth day, I do corrective exercise movement. As humans and as athletes that we are, of course, times that you might get injured, there's times that you might be imbalanced. One side might be uncompensating for the other side. So what I do is I tend to take one day out of my five days to work on my imbalances. So for today, I'm going to show you what I usually do. This is exactly what I do. All of this movement that I'm doing is to correct your imbalances. So if you have to do this twice in a week, I'm going to advise you to. How do you know that you have an like, imbalance? You should talk to a personal trainer. They do assessment and I can tell if somebody has an imbalance quickly. If you guys want, comment down below and I will for sure teach you how you can tell if you have a imbalance or you go to send me a picture of a squat um, and then I can definitely help you out with that. Don't forget to subscribe. I post a video every Friday and I post a bunch of information as shorts and don't forget to follow me on my instagram let's get to it it's very important to understand that when there's a problem in the body compensation can happen in multiple places while we're currently focusing on the hip flexors there could be another issue that needs attention as well now for example the hip flexors don't work in isolation they can affect other muscles right so there's actually a problem with the hip flexor it can lead to issues in your knee moving inward due to the hip duction to figure out the exact problem in the lumbopelvic hip complex also known as lphc we might need to use another test that is known as motion measurement or muscle strength assessment what i usually do with my client during the overhead squat assessment also known as ohsa is that they constantly show a low back arch this actually tells me that the hip flexor might be overacting and we should start addressing the issue right there and then during all of this movement that i've been doing this whole morning i'm gonna be honest it was much needed i put in so much work these five days and now i'm gonna go ahead and rest for two days however this does not mean that i am going to binge my life away that i'm gonna stay in bed all day we're gonna be active resting right that means light walking light cleaning guys so this is my five day split i hope you enjoy it i hope you took some inspiration i hope you took some informative information feel free to comment down below of any content that you want to see or anything that you need help with or just any comment comment down below i am hot but one thing that i do want to say is you have to no matter if you warm up and cool down every workout you have to specifically pick one day that you focus on correcting your muscles you just have to one simple one that i could teach you right now is if you're standing straight and you take a picture you can see right here you can tell if one is higher than the other that's actually the other side compensating for either the right side or the left side. That's just a tip. But that's all for now. I see you next time. Bye.